Well, first of all, sorry for these uh, little technical issues to get the uh, to get the presentation started. So my name is Friedrich van der Wehe. I am uh, the Chief Commercial Officer at uh, Arax, and I will guide you through the introduction of this uh, webinar today. Uh, we have a couple of more people here from the company. So for, obviously we have Paul, who will cover the main part of the presentation. So he will guide us through the A2P market, the different fraud scenarios, financial impact, uh, the way how we uh, monitor it, and also some case studies. And then uh, we also have, uh, amongst other colleagues, but we have our VP North America, so Christoph Oliver, uh, on this session, and also our VP uh, Latin America and Caribbean, Fidela Ponte. So many of uh, us are probably known to uh, most of you because we are frequent attendees uh, for the CFCA meeting. So it's a real pity we cannot see everybody uh, in person, but we really hope that uh, soon we will be able to meet uh, each other in person again. So, um, okay. Well, moving to the introduction of Arax. So just a few highlights. So we are uh, providing active testing for fraud detection and revenue assurance purposes. So we have uh, deployed a network of test event generators, or call it robots, call it probes. We have deployed that in around 180 countries globally. And uh, those robots are, uh, let's say, servers which allow us to make uh, transactions between uh, the robots. So we can set up, for example, uh, voice calls, we can send uh, messages, we can also set up data sessions. So basically from uh, 180 countries uh, globally. On top of that, we have a, a telecom route portfolio, or call it telecom resources, of around 4,000 different routes. Just to give you a few examples, what is a telecom resource? Is, for example, uh, a SIM card from T-Mobile US, which is owned by, by us, which means that we are, let's say, uh, an active subscriber, an active customer of a mobile operator, like, for example, T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon. So we do cover mobile operators in this way, uh, but also fixed lines, we're connected to carriers, so, so to wholesale carriers where we're having uh, calling cards uh, from all over the world, some voice over IP subscriptions. So all these routes are used for testing purposes. So, so this is, I would say, the, the assets of Arax. And on top of that, we build services. And all services are related to rev revenue insurance slash billing verification or interconnect fraud detection. So we exist since 2005, so we are celebrating our 15th anniversary. It's a little bit younger than, uh, than CFCA, but we have, uh, you know, we can celebrate together. <laughs> um, we do have, so we are a French company, uh, but we are spread out uh, globally. So we have an office, for example, in Boston, where Christophe is located. We have an office in Panama, where we have Fidel, Paul, and Julio. So, which means we're a, we're a global company. And over the years, we have been serving uh, around 230 different mobile operators or carriers um, from all over the world. So just a few milestones of the company. So as I said already, we have been created back in 2005. In 2009, we have developed an Etsy standard for billing verification. So this is a standard which is used by many telecoms regulators to make sure that the, the, the operators from that country, you know, uh, do billing along certain uh, standards. So we have actively participated in defining those, uh, those, those rules. We're a GSMA member since five, six years now, we're also a CFCA member and sponsor. So we are 
attending the CFC, CFCA meetings on a very frequent basis. In 2017, an important one for uh, audit teams, uh, we got an ESIA certification that is uh, needed for SOX compliancy. So a lot of audit teams from our customers globally request uh, that certification. And then uh, in 2019, um, just to name a last milestone, we have been elected like for the third time in a row as tier one uh, supplier for interconnect fraud detection by Rocco. So Rocco is an independent research company who's doing uh, yeah, researches in different areas of the telecommunications industry. And we are a tier one supplier, so which means that we're a well-established uh, player with a lot of experience in this uh, domain. Maybe a last words now on our products that we are offering to the market. So uh, if you can, yes, perfect, thank you. So in the upper part of the picture, you can see um, our revenue insurance product suite. So basically what we are doing is that we are checking if your retail offers that you are offering to your subscribers in the market, if they are correctly implemented in your systems, billing systems uh, in, your, in your company. So which means that we behave like end customers, we, we generate transactions and afterwards we check if everything is correctly built. So we're making sure that uh, there's no revenue leakage uh, when, you, uh, when you design new offers to be uh, offered to the, to the retail market. And then on the lower part, you can see our interconnect fraud detection product suite. So all what we do on the fraud detection side is linked to interconnect fraud detection. So, and there we have like uh, different sub products, but I would say uh, the, most, uh, the most prominent ones uh, these days are still Simbox uh, detection. So Simbox detection is where uh, mobile termination rates are being bypassed and so forth for like free termination on, uh, on a network. So this is uh, definitely valid, for example, in many countries in, uh, in Latin America. Um, next to that, we're also uh, making sure that we can test OTT bypass in your network. So what does it mean? is that like, for example, players such as Viber, um, often they also do termination now in the, in the network instead of the regular termination. So we're able to detect that and report that to you. And now the, the, the booming part on interconnect fraud detection is without any doubt A2P. So, so the, there is a, a big rise in uh, A2P business. And, players like Google, Amazon, Facebook, sending messages to your subscribers. In theory, they should also pay termination fees uh, to terminate those messages to your subscribers, and kind of like uh, uh, ATP access fees. Uh, but obviously, there exists ways to do it in a cheaper way than the way they should do it. So it's, uh, it's a rising threat, a rising risk, all over the world and uh, we are one of the pioneers in this uh, area to detect this kind of fraud. So that's why together with the CFCA management board we decided to do a, a webinar around uh, that topic. So if Paul is in the webinar in the meantime I would like to hand over yes. to him. Ah, perfect. Yeah, sorry guys my apologies for the, the, the technical difficulties at the beginning yeah. Christoph, if you could just jump onto the next slide, please, yeah? So we start by talking about the news in the global market. This uh, is a report that was produced in 2018 by Insight Partners, which basically stated that the ATP revenues in 2017, the actual revenues, were $44 billion across the world. They expected at that time a growth of between three and 4% in different regions around the world. 
with an expected or a forecasted revenue of $60 billion by 2025. So if you look at the um, North America section, the increase year by year was expected to be 3.8%, and in South America, around about 4.1%. If you could just jump, jump onto the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay. That was what we expected in 2018. What we've actually seen now that we're in 2020 is that the growth has been annually between 10 and 15 percent. So if that trend continues, we could be seeing anywhere from 70 to 90 billion dollars in terms of global revenue associated to A to P. That's one of the few pockets of market growth in our industry. So it's, it's very important that we, we grow that and we protect that. Yeah? If you could just, yeah. All right, so I guess the question everybody asks is, SMS is old and you know, everybody uses WhatsApp and Viber and Facebook Messenger and other OTT applications now. Why, you know, why so much um, SMS? Well, a couple of reasons, yeah? The first is that everybody has SMS. So the 16, 6 billion mobile subscribers and 6 billion SMS subscribers. If you look at the biggest OTT application, it's probably around about 2 billion subscribers. And in different parts of the world, you have different trends and different um, favorite OTT applications. So at the end of the day, if a, if a company wants to reach out to its customer with an important message, there's no better way to do it than SMS. Even if that means that they have to pay a fee to make that contact with the customer. One other important note is that 98%, our research shows that 98% of SMS messages are read within five minutes, whereas OTT messages, it tends to take longer. From my perspective, and you know, people can give their opinion on this, I regard OTT as more of an informal method of communication. So it's things that I use to share information with friends and different groups about social events and so on. Uh, whereas an SMS is seen as a more formal business for a form of communication. So maybe maybe some people want to give their views on to give my my point of view. Yeah. Of course, uh, when termination fees are paid, that can lead to termination rate fraud. If you could jump onto the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay. So termination rates combined with cheap retail rates, lots of traffic, and we're talking billions, ten, hundreds of billions of messages a year. It equals a big incentive for fraudsters to become involved in the business. So all of the ingredients are there to attract fraudulent operators into the marketplace. If you could just jump onto the next slide, please. Okay, so this is, this is a little overview of what should happen and possibly what does happen in a fraudulent environment. So we have all of these different uh, actors, all of these different providers that want to interact with their customer, whether it's a bank updating you with, a uh, with regard to a transaction on your account, whether it's an airline updating you on the status of your flight, or a delivery service updating you on the status of your parcel. There's a whole range of different ways in which we would interact with these, with these actors. Yeah? In the ideal scenario, they'd be connected with an SMS aggregator who would terminate the traffic directly to the operator paying the fee yeah, to do that. that <laughs> okay. um, and we're given an example there. The, the termination rate we understand in the US is around about a quarter of a cent, but in other markets, it's significantly higher. So we've seen termination rates up to five or six US cents in, in certain markets, yeah? So we've given the, an example there, but in many cases, it's, it's very much higher. Obviously, the, uh, the aggregators, depending on how they, how they run their business and what their motivations are, 
may look to avoid that termination fee, which leads to a bypass scenario, where they utilize retail services in order to avoid the termination fee and possibly pay a lower fee or in some cases, nothing at all to the, to the operator. So there's two possible fraud scenarios that impact operators. The first one is the incoming A to P SMS fraud, where the messages are delivered to you without paying the appropriate termination fee, as we've seen above. But there's also where an operator's services, retail services, are used or SMS to an operator, and they suffer because of that because there may be termination fees that they need to pay to the operator. So we see local uh, traffic to other local operators and traffic to other international operators. And I'll move through and describe these situations in more detail. So if you jump onto the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay, incoming A to P fraud. So basically we, we've discovered four different scenarios that impact customers at operators A to P termination revenue. The first one is the scenario where your SIM cards, the operator's SIM cards, has be, uh, are used to terminate A to P traffic to your network. The result of that uh, type of fraud is that you lose the A to P termination fee. The second scenario is that another operator, another domestic operator, their SIMs are used to terminate A to P traffic to your network. So in this case, again, you lose the A to P termination fee. In some cases, you will gain a lower, a much lower domestic termination fee. Now these scenarios will vary from location to location. So the type one and type two scenarios that I'm describing at the moment are very common in Latin America, uh, do happen in, the, in North America, but are less prevalent. Yeah? The third scenario is an international operator SIM is used to uh, terminate A to P SMS to your subscribers. This, this situation is more prevalent in Europe where there's controls over retail rates and termination fees. So we often see call, uh, SIM cards from one country being used to terminate A to P messages to another country within Europe. So again, you lose the A to P termination fee, but you may gain a lower international termination fee. The last scenario that we've highlighted on the incoming side relates to SMS from fixed lines or DIDs with SMS enabled. This scenario is very prevalent in North America. And again, as a result of this situation, you would lose your A to P termination fee. So four different scenarios for revenue loss on the incoming A to P side of termination fees. If you just jump to the next slide, please. Uh, and one more important point there, um, the quality of service is lower. Your customers are receiving messages from unknown or random telephone numbers rather than a message uh, or, a, or a code that originates from the original sender. If you could jump onto the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay, onto the outgoing A to P fraud side now. So two scenarios that result in inflated costs for operators. So the domestic scenario where your SIM is being used to terminate A to P SMS to another operator within the same country. And if there's a termination fee involved, then the wholesale costs become inflated. And the last scenario on the outbound side, outgoing side, is the international. So as we described in Europe, if there's a termination fee, an international termination fee between the two operators, again, international wholesale costs are inflated. 
if you could jump to the next slide, please, Christoph. Yeah. Okay. So just to summarize, two scenarios in um, incoming A to P SMS fraud, A to P traffic is lost, and that results in a decrease or a loss to your international wholesale revenues. Outgoing A to P SMS fraud, where your SIMs or your services are abused, and as a result, your, international, your interconnect costs are inflated. Operators may be inf uh, impacted by one or both of these different situations. If you could jump to the next slide, please, Christoph. So now I would like to talk about what we've done within Iraq to try and quantify this problem and understand this problem on a global level. So around about two or three years ago, Arax initiated a global surveillance campaign or a, a seamless uh, monitoring campaign where we acquired SIMs from operators around the world and instigated testing through various origination points, both in terms of prime origins and aggregators. We've actually covered over 180 operators around 69 countries in the, in the worldwide campaign. And specifically within the Americas, we've covered 36 operators within 15 countries. So I'd just like to show you the results of the, those campaigns now and what we found. If you could jump to the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay. So these are the figures for the LATAM campaign. We found that two thirds of the operators that were monitored within the campaign were actually impacted by A to P fraud. The, the diagram below shows, or the graph below shows the most impacted countries. So some countries in LATAM with up to 55% infection rate in terms of termination through gray routes of A to P traffic, yeah? The important thing to note here is that more and more voice carriers, regional voice carriers, are becoming involved in the A to P market. So as they see declines in their voice traffic, they are starting to move into A to P in order to recover some of those losses or regain some re revenues from an alternative source. This is a really, really dangerous development. These guys all already have a presence in the region, an established presence in the region through their voice infrastructure. And then now you starting to utilize that to increase A to P traffic. So we know of several major operators or carriers that have already moved into this field. And we're aware of several more that are actually in the process of moving into this field. So we would expect those infection rates to increase greatly over the coming months. If we just jump to the next slide, please. Okay. The North American picture is very different and a little more complicated. So actually, in terms of SIM box fraud and termination through SIMs, we, it's lesser within North America. It ranges from 2% within one operator to around about 13% in another operator. So it does exist. It is happening. Um, but it's not the main source of revenue loss. The main source of revenue loss that we've discovered is termination through fixed line services or fixed line services with SNMS enabled. So if you look at the diagram there, the yellow section is the amount of traffic that was passing through suspicious mobile services. The golden section is the amount of traffic that was passing through suspicious fixed line services. This trend has been consistent through 2019 and into 2020. We are aware that 10 digit long code services have been launched by some operators earlier this year. So in effect, that's a service that basically replaces the short code and allows the termination of traffic, A to P traffic via a 10 digit code. However, we know that this is not completely responsible for all of that golden area. In fact, 
we know that it only represents a small percentage of that golden area. Golden area. So, you know, this is really an area that um, is different for North America and we believe is a very significant problem for operators in North America. We would welcome any of the operators uh, in North America to make their comments and give us feedback on this issue and the development of 10 digit long codes within North America. So, okay, if you could just jump to the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay, so in LATAM, here's, uh, we jump, we'll jump into a case study in order to show the impact on an operator and also the financial or the potential financial impact on the operator. So this is actually an operator in LATAM in Mexico where the termination via suspicious services rather than legitimate gateways actually outweighs by 55% to 45% uh, in our testing. So if you look at the section below, I actually listed, I think, 10 different origins there where all of the traffic that passed was terminated fraudulently. That's only a small su subsection of the complete list. Um, the list was actually too big to put in the presentation. So the fact that so many uh, uh, aggregators and origins are able to terminate so much traffic is a big indication that that 55% is, is a fairly accurate reflection of the marketplace. So it's, it's widespread. There's a number of people involved in the market and a number of um, players involved in the termination of this traffic. And that's reflected in our results. If you could just jump to the next slide, please, Christoph. Okay. So it's great to talk about all of the theory, but how does it hit our bottom line? Yeah. So again, on the lat arm situation, we, in, in order to keep the, uh, the mobile operator anonymous, we rounded the number of subscribers, or we said the number of subscribers was 10 million. Based on our discussions, we realized that there was approximately four A to P SMS received by the, each subscriber each month. And the termination rate in Mexico was 0.36 of a Mexican peso, which when you calculate it all out and multiply all those numbers together, gives you about 172 million Mexican pesos are about 7.5 million US dollars. Now, if we apply the infection rate that we've discovered as a result of our testing, that would indicate a loss to the operator of about 4.1 million US dollars per year. Even if we are a lot more conservative and we look at the best case or the most likely case scenario, we're still talking about a loss of between 1.8 and 3 million US dollars. So significant le revenue losses uh, impacting the carrier. If you could just go down again, please, Christoph. Okay, so best case scenario, a revenue loss of 1.88 million US. If you could jump onto the next screen, please. Okay, so this is a case study for the North American operator. So again, the level of suspicious mobile traffic, um, traffic terminated through mobile numbers is lower, 2%. Suspicious via fixed line numbers, 54%, and only 44% terminating via a legitimate gateway. If we look at the sample findings by origin at the bottom of this page, we see a, a really different picture, yeah? So in effect, many of the operators terminate traffic in different ways, both using legitimate gateways and suspicious mobile numbers or fixed line numbers. This is an indication that they do have access and they can terminate traffic legitimately to our networks, but they choose not to. So they're either blending the traffic or 
they're diverting certain types of traffic uh, from certain origins via gray routes rather than terminating through the legit legitimate route. One of the interesting findings that we identified during the course of our campaigns is that when we made a request for two-factor authentication, if we rejected or if we asked to resend the message, even though it had been, uh, been delivered, we asked to resend it, we saw that the first version of the message was sent through a gray route and the second version of the message was actually sent through a legitimate route which leads us to believe that there is either some um, intelligence behind the way in which the aggregators are managing this traffic. So they know they need to deliver to the originators, but perhaps they're trying to save money on the first option and only delivering through a legitimate route if they feel there's a delay or a problem with the gray route. So. If we can just jump onto the next slide, please, Christoph. And again, we've rounded and changed the number of subscribers just to keep the operator anonymous. In this case, the feedback that we have is the estimate is eight A to P SMSs terminating per subscriber per month. The termination rate we understand is a quarter of a cent. So if we multiply that all out, we get a total expected revenue of about $24 million a year. Again, if we go to our worst case scenario, based on the infection rate that we've covered, we see a loss of potentially $13 million. Being more conservative and looking at the best case scenario or the most likely case scenario, we estimate a, a, a revenue loss of between 4.8 and $9.6 million. So again, a very significant impact on the operator's bottom line. Just jump forward, please, Christoph. So I'm gonna hand back to Fred uh, to talk about the conclusions and next steps. Okay, thanks a lot, Paul. So I'll have one more slide to present you as a, as a conclusion and then we can move forward with uh, questions if there are any questions from, uh, from the audience. So I think it's clear in the presentation that we presented that A2P is definitely booming. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a discussion uh, when preparing this webinar around the, the number of messages that your subscribers uh, receive per month. It really depends on the market, but what is clear is, is that it's definitely on, uh, on the rise. So, and as Paul indicated in both business cases presented, obviously the more uh, messages that your subscribers receive, the more the financial impact will also be um, at the end. So, it's booming for both the, the carriers, but also for the fraudsters. And, and fraudsters really know how to avoid the, uh, the standard firewall controls. So what is very clear, uh, and, and if we look at our customers that are actively uh, combating uh, SMS and more particular A2P bypass fraud, is that the best way to tackle it is to use a combination of a firewall and complement it with an active uh, testing solution, like for example, the one which, uh, which, has, which we presented uh, today. It works in, in two ways. First of all, and the boats um, are, are strong in specific areas related to, to, the, to the fraud type, but on top of it, they can enforce each other. So, which means that a lot of our customers use our data and based on test event generation to improve the rules and controls that they have in their uh, in their firewall so you can use both approaches and in this way uh, let's say secure your network better against uh, a to p uh, fraud so what is clear is that uh, by addressing this a to p fraud and significantly add uh, value to your, uh, to your bottom line. Because in the end, uh, if, if you look at the fraud scheme, fraudsters are moving away with the margin that you are supposed to have for uh, the services that you offer. 
So that was the conclusion. Um, if there are any questions from the audience, we will be happy to uh, answer to your questions.